Hello there, ladies and gentlemen of the internet. I'm here to clarify some points about the 4x3 screen Frankenpad, the one you're probably looking to build or buy if you're after one of the greatest 4x3 screen laptops you can get. There are a number of different quote-unquote Frankenpads that we talk about on the forums, but I'll gloss over that because the one I'm talking about here is the 15-inch T60 and the 14-inch 4x3 T61 combined to make what we call on the forums a T601F. F, of course, standing for Frankenpad. The T601F combines the brilliant UXGA flex view of the 15-inch T60P, the 4x3 chassis to facilitate installation of said flex view and other 4x3 displays, with the motherboard and updated hardware features of the 14-inch T61, which can allow the installation of more powerful and efficient Penryn CPUs, a higher RAM cap, SATA 2 speeds if you install the Middleton's BIOS, and far superior NVIDIA graphics, except, well, there's quite a catch with that, actually. It's a very big one. I'll tell you afterwards. Anyways, to get started, what you need first is a working, good condition 15-inch T60 or T60P with the UXGA flex view, if that's the display you want. When hunting for your source unit, watch out, there is a 16x10 widescreen T60P. This is the one you do not want. It's the 4x3 model that you want. On the flip side, you'll want a 14-inch T61 4x3 model. The 4x3 model. Emphasis on the 4x3. When shopping for a T61, you'll mostly come across the 14-inch and 15-inch widescreen models. This is not what you want, and they will not work. What you want is a 4x3 14-inch T61. They will be a bit harder to find because production for those specific models were halted before the T61 ended its life cycle. So you'll have to double check and make sure that the ThinkPad T61 you buy is indeed the right one. Righto! Putting the two laptops side by side, you'll want to start by disassembling your T60. Remember that if you're planning on doing the Frankenpad build yourself, make sure you have adequate experience taking laptops apart, you have the proper tools, and you did all your homework. This isn't a simple motherboard swap, and ThinkPads aren't the easiest machines to take completely apart and correctly reassemble. Even the smallest mistake can cost you a lot of money, a lot of your time, or seat you with a Frankenpad that won't work properly. After taking everything apart, you can set aside the modem, heatsink, and motherboard. However, before getting rid of the motherboard, make sure you take the extender piece on the side off. It's a little piece that has the ports for the Ultra Bay devices to plug into. The idea with this part is so 14-inch 4x3 T60s and 15-inch 4x3 T60s can use the same motherboards, this piece extends the reach of the plugs on the motherboard so it can still reach the Ultra Bay on the 15-inch chassis. You will need this piece for the T61 motherboard. With the T60 ready for the swap, go ahead and start taking apart the T61. You'll need the motherboard with this PC card cage still on it, the T61 and T60 PC cages are not the same, and the heatsink as well. Make sure you install the extension piece before screwing everything together, and you may have to slightly modify the T60's roll cage to properly accommodate the T61 motherboard. After reassembling the T60 with a new motherboard and heatsink, you should be good to go. Provided you correctly plugged everything back in, installed RAM, a CPU, and plugged the screen in, a test fire should result in a successful boot, in which afterwards you are free to do whatever you wish to the remaining parts. After seeing all that needs to be done, you're probably thinking to yourself that you can save a pretty penny by not buying two whole laptops, but instead only buying the necessary parts, namely a T60 that happens to be missing a motherboard, and a T61 motherboard all by itself. But remember, it's highly recommended to have the T61 heatsink paired with your T61 motherboard, and that the PC card cage from the T60 will not work with the T61 motherboard. Also remember the extension piece for the Ultra Bay. Additionally, it's safer buying two working units and then building one working Frankenpad unit from both rather than getting parts and not knowing exactly what went wrong when you have problems booting after final assembly. Now, this brings us to the next dilemma. Obviously, your Frankenpad will inherit most of its specifications from the hardware of the T61 laptop that you sourced, so you have an option. You can have an Intel Integrated Graphics motherboard, or an NVIDIA dedicated graphics motherboard. Most of you out there will obviously want the NVIDIA graphics, but hold it! There's still one more thing I need to run by you. You see, some specific NVIDIA chips made in 2008 were built with a defect. The problem was eventually corrected, but not until after normal production of the 4x3 14-inch T61 was halted. And this problem doesn't have to do with the solder on the board. It has to do with the chip itself, which means that when the video fails, there's nothing you can do to fix it other than get another motherboard. In plain, it means that if you get a T61 motherboard with NVIDIA graphics, even if it works, it's likely destined to fail irreversibly. So when building your Frankenpad, you have the option of Intel graphics, which you can count on to not fail, but it is far less powerful. It's still alright for web surfing and some light gaming. 
or you can get an NVIDIA graphics board and have the extra power, but you're taking the risk. There's more options to help your chances if you really do want an NVIDIA graphics Frankenpad. We can help you out. Now, almost every successful Frankenpad build will benefit from flashing the Middleton's BIOS. Middleton's BIOS is a modified BIOS provided by a user of the name Middleton, and it adds a lot of extra functionality that you wouldn't normally get out of a T61 motherboard. To put it simply, the BIOS allows you to install Penryn CPUs on all T61 boards, disables the Wi-Fi card whitelist, opens up SATA 2 speed, and installs Slick 2.1. A mod in the BIOS allows the installation of later Penryn CPUs into older Mera motherboards, so any T61 board will run a Penryn CPU. You might be wondering to yourself what CPU would be best to fit in a Frankenpad. Most Frankenpadders will opt for the T9300 2.5 GHz Core 2 Duo, which is the best bang for your buck. The T9500 is slightly better, but is usually far more costly, and most users out there won't notice the power difference. For those who crave nothing but the absolute crazy best, there is the X9000, which Lenovo themselves never normally installed in a T61. The X9000 will run in your Frankenpad, but it is outrageously more expensive than the other two CPUs, and can result in cooling issues depending on your setup. It'll also shorten the life of your NVIDIA chip if you have one that's expected to go out. As for the Wi-Fi card, a lot of Frankenpatters find it suitable to ditch the 3965 and 4965 for, at the very least, a 5100 or 5300 which boosts the signal and also runs cooler. I have heard of people fitting 6205s in theirs, but I run a 6300 in mine. The SATA 2 speeds make running any sort of solid state drive much more worthwhile, and newer hard drives will work better too. The Slick 2.1 table basically helps activate Windows 7 installations if you plan on installing genuine Windows 7 on your Frankenpad. Well, I hope all of that helped and that you have a better idea of what you're getting into with the T601 Frankenpad. Remember, it's not a simple mod, so if you have any questions, ask on the forums first. Do all your research, or if you plan on buying one that's already built, make sure the one you're getting has no chance of failure. Good luck, ladies and gentlemen, and happy thinkpadding!